Hello again. Welcome to Monday Bible. This is not a typical episode. We are meeting uh, today Michał Araszkiewicz, professor from Jagiellonian University, deep in AI research and co-author of first report on uh, AI and law. Michał, thank you for being here. Nice to see you, Michał. Thanks for this invitation. We have prepared the report on impact of AI on legal business. Just to tell you briefly, so we have conducted a statistical survey. We questioned 200 law firms from the whole world uh, about use of AI, about the challenges they face, about opportunities they see. And uh, now we are commenting it by, by top AI and law researcher from the whole world. Michał, what is striking you during preparation of, of this report? What was astonishing? First of all, I'm delighted that such report has been prepared finally. It has long been emphasized that much more communication is needed between the legal business and the research community. The research on the application of computational tools in connection with the support of tasks performed by lawyers has been around for more than 40 years now. However, it seems that the legal business uh, is not like entirely aware of research that is being done. Uh, so I believe that this is an extremely useful opportunity for both communities. On the other hand, it's uh, potentially fruitful for the research community to uh, get acquainted with the actual data uh, concerning the implementation of AI tools in law firms worldwide, because we may make different assumptions intuitively or on the basis of our still limited uh, experience. But the access to such broad data set is something the researchers are craving for. I am very happy due to this very strong response from the research community to this report. I'm also very happy uh, due to the uh, number of responses we have received from law firms. Apparently, they were quite open to share uh, information. Uh, in uh, in the process of survey. Now, there are a lot of interesting details in the survey results. This data leads to fascinating questions and they lead to the possibility of very interesting follow-ups. So we can go beyond like this uh, stereotypical or intuitive thinking about how AI could support the work of lawyers uh, or uh, substitute them in a certain extent. We could finally base our convictions on uh, on the actual data and the opinions uh, of legal practitioners. Uh, this is amazing. I agree that it can be a good bridge between a uh, world of researcher and world of legal practice. I think legal researcher world has answered to many questions uh, that uh, legal business doesn't know yet. So it can be the bridge uh, to pass researcher, but also from legal research world about solutions already found. Uh, so it, it can be uh, really, really useful and fruitful. I was uh, struck about the, the answers uh, related to labor market. Uh, that according to McKinsey report, I have read a few, few months ago, over one third of, of employees is scared uh, of AI replacing them. And just slightly over 10% of lawyers is. So this is my very big surprise about the report and its results. Is there any special number you are uh, surprised about? Apparently, the potential of disruption of AI uh, in the sphere of legal business, its transformative power is still slightly underestimated. On the other hand, the majority of our respondents uh, pointed out that they are interested in application of AI in the context of streamlining repetitive and mundane tasks. We are aware as legal practitioners that such repetitive tasks have to be done and uh, they form part of the work of uh, any law firm and it is typically included uh, in the law firm's fee. So there is a question how uh, the application of AI tools in connection for, for instance, of document generation will transform the business models. And one might have an impression that the law firms are still accommodating the consequences of adoption of uh, large language models, for instance, because if you can generate a, a really decent uh, employment contract or NDA contract in five seconds, uh, as opposed to five hours, this is a tremendous difference. Of course, human uh, oversight is essential here. However, this has a huge potential concerning the transformation of business models. To put more emphasis on the advantages of a human mind as opposed to the tasks that can be quite easily 
automated and uh, streamlined uh, through algorithms. By the way, it seems that for many years, lawyers have performed tasks that are perhaps more easily doable via automation, like correcting the uh, huge documents or looking for tiny errors in these documents, because we know that such tiny errors can have a tremendous impact, uh, for instance, on the result of the uh, litigation process. Uh, small formal uh, uh, mistakes concerning the attachments uh, to, uh, to lawsuits uh, and so on. So uh, these tasks are very amenable to uh, automation. Mm -hmm. While we may reflect on what is like the actual added value of human oversight in this connection. I think we are just before the revolution. Uh, I have discussed these matters on few conferences and nobody knows how it impacts the, the hourly billing uh, model and the model where six associates and the team of paralegals sit on one document and comments it, uh, rephrases it, and now AI may, may do it. Of course, some lawyer says they'll be more efficient and they can do more and more tasks and it will be the same for the business. But this is one of the main uh, issues to, to be discussed after our, our report is uh, published. But one more thing to add is that lawyers think AI will be widespread and uh, uh, every lawyer in near future will be using it. So what do you think about this? I strongly agree with this opinion. The sheer Accuracy and scalability and uh, performance level of AI tools will make them indispensable in the legal work. Uh, so the uh, basic question is uh, how we can reformulate the essence of legal work in this connection. And uh, as we know, legal tasks may be generally divided into bespoke and commodities. Uh, and there is a stereotypical view that AI will take over this uh, commodity sphere while lawyers will focus more on this bespoke uh, part. However, there appears a question whether there is a sufficient market for such top quality, nuanced legal services. Because also in connection with civil litigation or commercial law, a lot of tasks are quite uh, standardized, right? So they are more on the side of commodities. I think that there will be a lot of new jobs emerging in the sphere of legal market, like professional prompters. Uh, so people who will be trained to prompt the AI engine adequately to produce the most accurate information and to avoid mistakes. The evaluators, uh, people who will be trained to pinpoint the crucial parts of the results that will be generated by AI and being able to, to react to these problems. Moreover, I also do think that there is a lot of space for the synergy between lawyers and argumentation specialists, because we already have the algorithms that generate argumentation, but professional evaluation of written argumentation is not the it's not the activity, the lawyers are systematically trained. We are rather acquiring this capacity in practice by analyzing dozens and dozens uh, rationales of judicial decisions or responses in the, in, in the course of lawsuit. But we are typically doing it in a very scattered manner, basing mostly on our experience and so therefore a much more systematic approach towards the uh, evaluation of the quality of argumentation, of its structure, of its actually grounding in legitimate legal sources will be needed. This matters and many more are in our report. We asked companies whether they employ prompt engineers or legal engineers, how they implement AI tools or implemented legal tools in, in their practice and many more. We speak about challenges, about opportunities law firms see and how AI impacts uh, scalability of, of their business. So if you want uh, to, to get to know all this information, read our report just uh, after it's published this year. We will promote it widely in, in the internet. We are speaking about it on the conferences like Eurix in Maastricht. So stay connected in our social media. Follow us. We will also be most grateful for any feedback concerning our report. Yeah, so read it, give us feedback and join the group of our respondents uh, or commentators. Michal, thank you for being here for the interesting discussion uh, and you guys see you on my next episode of Monday Bible. Thank you so much.